Aloha. Top of the morning, friends and family. How are you wonderful, beautiful people doing today? So I've been reading this book called The Intentional Father, and it's a book that uh, one of our church groups has recommended that we read, and last night I got together with some of the guys from that group, and we discussed some of the first chapters in the book and kind of what our intentions are as fathers and the idea behind being an intentional father to be just that, a father who is intentionally raising their kids. And it's been great. I highly recommend it to any of you guys who are fathers out there or thinking about becoming fathers or have been fathers. Any state of fatherhood, I suppose. Check out this book, The Intentional Father. Really good. Last night, one of the things we discussed was masculinity and what it means to each of us as fathers. And there were lots of different opinions. It was really great discussion. Um, here's what's happening today. We're going to travel up to the bay to see my dad and my grandma and a bunch of other family and, and celebrate my dad's birthday. My cousin had the idea to do this. <laughs> We're gonna take my three kids, his three kids, my dog, his dog, load all of us in the same vehicle and go there. My moment of masculinity, I'm really realizing right here, right now, when we go away for weekend trips generally as a family, since this is uh, just Kazo and I trip, Hillary's gonna stay home at work. But when we go on family trips usually for the weekend, we end up packing an entire roof rack of stuff. And I'm gonna say that that's not masculinity <laughs> because here's what I'm bringing for myself, all three kids, and this is, this is everything for the entire weekend. This, this bag right here. That's all of it. All the clothes, all the toiletry. There's 12 different kinds of whiskey in there, a bunch of cigars. I mean, there's all, are you, are you in, you wanna come down and join this video, intentional boy? My cousin was supposed to be here a half hour ago. Let a little late start, but okay. Th this book, this book has assignments. Um, the first assignment in the book was to do a 24 hour fast, pray on what it is you want to do intentionally as a father and, and what it means and what, what your goals are going to be. Second assignment, was to write a letter to your own father, uh, kind of honoring him and basically telling him the things you think he got right. Starting with that as your basis for how to move forward with your own fatherhood. So I got this letter here. I wrote it yesterday. I'm going to read it to him if he wants me to. When we are at his birthday party, I'm just gonna give it to him as one of his, his gifts and. If he is okay with me reading it in front of everybody, then I will. I'm excited about it, I'm nervous about it, got lots of emotions about it, but I thought it was something I should share here on the channel, because it could be a big moment. Look at up there. Look at up where? Hello. See him? See him there? <laughs> what are you doing up there, dog? You coming with us or what? Aha! A woof. <laughs> well, as soon as my cousin gets here, we'll, we'll embark on this journey. Whenever that yeah, is. Look who it is. I'm ready. I'm ready. Top of the morning, friends and family. <laughs> Chester! Woo! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> You ready to hold down the fort in the back of the bus with all the little kids? Uh. Yes. Nice. last night had some chicken adobo and yeah it was good we kind of left you guys after the car left you in the car but I'm a little nervous still excited but definitely nervous about reading this letter to my dad um, I mean what if he doesn't want me to read it to him uh, it's fine probably I mean he'll read it himself at some point if that's the case but 
can't really sleep. Um, time is going very, very slow. Are you ready to face the day, T? No? You want to go back to sleep? Okay. Are you a precious duck, T? Bubbles are life. <laughs> Heel. What happens if you kick it over? <laughs> So we were having a little discussion the other day about what masculinity is. I'm curious what you think of when you think of masculinity. Hmm. Well, I've been studying Flemish, so what immediately came to mind was masculine and feminine uh, endings versus neuter. So... <laughs> wait, 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 well, what? <laughs> In uh, languages, there's like, especially Indo-European languages, there's masculine and feminine forms and then neuter forms. So like uh, neuter words have het in Flemish for the and uh, masculine and feminine ones have de, like de, de, de tree, de baum. <laughs> wait, 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 um, okay. You have That's to, what came to mind. I know, but you have to forgive me. I'm, I'm not understanding what you mean by neutered for, neutering. Oh, they've got three different endings based on whether it's masculine, feminine, or neuter. Neuter meaning neither masculine nor feminine, like not living kind of things, typically. So a lot of languages have it. Spanish has it. You know, English has kind of lost that because we lost most of our endings. So that's what first came into mind. <laughs> Probably All right. not where you were going with it. <laughs> no, no, no. That's 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 really what I want. What I wanted was your the first thing you thought of when you think of masculinity. So, and, and that's just because I was just working on my Flemish yesterday. So, donated by class of '99. That's me. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, nobody else is here yet, so I think my dad and I are just gonna sit in the living room and stare at each other until everybody else does get here. <laughs> I feel like I'm probably sensitive to being generous. I'm not being too ambitious. Get out of the way! <laughs> Fresh glue, it didn't tear, it still came unstuck. Oh my god. I would like to read it to you if, if you would permit me to. <sighs> you know, we deign not to let you read our letters. <laughs> it's our letter. <laughs> you mean now? I mean... Out loud in front of everybody? That, I, I, I would probably be... probably screen it first, make sure what's in there. <laughs> Children, do I, you uh, Children, I do have freedom of speech. I could, be, well, I could say anything I want to them any time when you're not around, man. But, <laughs> yeah, but if, if you prefer to read it by yourself in private, I will respect that. But if, 
but I would like to read it to you if I have your okay. permission. All right. Okay. Permission granted. Okay. Dear Dad. Is this serious? Or? Oh, we're going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. I'm going to read Grandpa a letter. Okay, stop yelling at your cousin. He didn't do anything wrong to you. Dear Dad, at this point in your life, now that I'm a man raising my own kids, you may look at me and reflect on your own life as my father. You may have some regrets, and you hopefully have proud memories as well. I just wanted to take a moment to tell you about some of the things that I think you got right. Oh. We oh. <laughs> there for a second. Uh-oh. To tell you how grateful I am for those things, to tell you how privileged I feel to have had and still have you as my dad. Perhaps we should start from the beginning. Uh-oh. Maybe not my exact beginning, but my first memory of our relationship. No! That word could probably sum it all up for you at this point. <laughs> no! That episode. Yep. <laughs> Was I saying look? Was I saying slug? Did I mean look at the slug? <laughs> I was frustrated because, at no fault of your own, you didn't understand what I was saying. <laughs> Though now, with this letter, my hope is that you'll understand what I'm saying as clear as day. <laughs> Long after that no <laughs> moment, I learned that you had been frantically searching for me. A frantic search that I now know must have felt like an eternity. Uh, you wanted to know where I was. You needed to know where I was. And that may seem like an obvious trait for a father to some. However, we are well aware there are a great many number of fathers, dare we give them that title, who don't care where their kids are. It's seemingly unbelievable, but it's true. I've known this to be true through personal experience with almost all of my friends growing up. And I'm, I'm sure that you, being the great father that you are, uh, don't feel like you need my gratitude for just being in my life. I have seen how a lack of a father has utterly ruined the lives of those around me. And thank you for saving me from that fate. As a master of my own reality, I know that was a choice you had. Thank you for getting it right. <laughs> Uh, Leave that outside, not in the house, okay? Thank you. Uh, kids, kids, kids want some ridiculous things. I wanted to have a pet dinosaur. Totally realistic and attainable. You remember as well as I that fateful day when a California king snake came crawling through our backyard in Hayward. And upon learning that snake was our neighbor's escape pet, we also learned that he had many pet dinosaurs. I don't remember if there was any resistance from you at the idea of, of me getting my own pet dinosaur. Whether there was or not, I don't think it was longer than a week before I had one. And how many fathers would have rejected the idea of having to take care of a pet dinosaur? (laughs) I have no idea. We know how huge an impact having a pet dinosaur has had on my life. (laughs) It just may be the key to my success. So (laughs) thank you for getting that right. And as a father does, you engaged in a wide variety of activities with me. The first one that comes to mind is playing tennis. You worked with me. And though playing and working the ball with their sons may seem like commonplace among fathers, you said something during that tennis session that stuck with me for all of my life. You recognized that I had natural ability, and you told me that I could probably do whatever I wanted in life and be good at it. And it may have seemed like a simple thing to say at the time, but that positive affirmation given to my preteen self set the tone for the rest of my life. When you told me that, I literally became a master of my own reality. Uh-oh. I did that? <laughs> I, yeah, I know that may that move <laughs> caused you and many around me must strife in the coming years as I would continue <laughs> to master my own reality, as one does. Mm. But thank you for getting that right, because you gave me the confidence to live the life that I want. And speaking of living the life that I want, I don't believe that boys are born with any instincts on how to treat girls hmm. properly. Mm. There's this blank space. I I put this blank space right here in the letter and marked it out because that blank space represents the moment that just took place. I took a small break from writing this letter to run upstairs and hug my wife. I thanked her for being the best thing that could have ever happened to my life. And you made it very clear to me how to treat girls. And not just through the many, many examples of how you treated mom and my sisters, but you let me know that it doesn't matter how I might feel in any given moment, I am to treat them with respect. Uh, do I mess it up sometimes? Sure. 
Maybe we all do. But what's important is that I recognize when I'm doing it wrong and do my best to correct it. And I learned that from you. Uh, Lord knows our society and modern culture don't teach us men that. Would I have the amazing, beautiful, inside-and-out wife that I have today had you not instilled that principle in me? Absolutely not. No question. So thank you, Dad. Thank you for getting that right. Uh, let's go back to this master of reality thing. I know you love that. I know you love it. <laughs> one thing that masters of reality need more than anything is the one thing they seem to spend their lives resisting and fighting against. Rules. <laughs> Boundaries and rules. We need, need them. And without them, a master of his own reality soon suffers entropy. So someone needs to set those boundaries and rules. God help that person. <laughs> there is no station in life that deserves more pity and gratitude than the role of one who must set these rules and boundaries in place. To enforce those rules and boundaries against a master of reality is a task that almost always leads to the entropy of one's own life. Mm -hmm. To survive such a task, let alone succeed in delaying said entropy, this is the point where I forgot I was supposed to do something that I didn't do and I'm going to go do it right now. Right now. Okay, uh, back, back to the interest. Yes, uh, to, when you're our age, you to don't overthink it, you just forget things. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, to enforce those rules and boundaries against a master of reality's attack always leads to entropy in one's own life. <laughs> to survive such a task, let alone succeed in delaying said entropy for any <laughs> amount of time at all, deserves a medal. Uh oh. That I was supposed to already have in my pocket. Is it titanium? It's gold. <laughs> Pure yeah. gold. Ooh. Certainly <laughs> yours. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay. Let's talk about sacrifice. Oh. At this point in my life, I believe that the son made the sacrifice for the father. Would I believe that if the father had not sacrificed for the son? I know that you worked hard to support us, to support me. I know your hard work was not necessarily something you had a burning passion for, <laughs> yet you did it for us, for me, to allow us all to do all the things that we've gotten to do. It's still supporting us to this day. How many countless opportunities was I afforded because of your sacrifice, hard work, and dedication to supporting this family more than I deserved? So please, please listen. This it may be the most important part of this letter. I know that you have your doubts about some of your parenting techniques. Well, let's be honest, is there any no worthy parent out there that doesn't have those doubts? No. <laughs> I think not. Let me go back to another of my earliest memories. I think I was four or five years old. Uh, I remember randomly walking up to you and mom one day and saying this. If there were a whole line of all the mommies and daddies in the world for me to choose from, I would pick you. <laughs> With all my heart, I still feel that way today and have every day of my life. I couldn't possibly have asked you to get one more thing right. It is because of you I am the man I am today. I love who I've become and I owe every last drop of that love to the love that you gave to me and still give to me today. So from the bottom of my heart and soul, thank you, Dad. Thank you for getting everything right. I love you. Why are you making me so sad? Thank you, son. Eli. 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 No, he's still there. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for letting me read it. Hmm, probably best. <laughs> little note.